Metabones, the first company to introduce speed boosters or accelerators, or turbos, for cameras. It was released as an adapter for mirrorless cameras on January 14, 2013, specifically targeted APS-C or smaller sensors to imitate the focal length of a full-frame camera when using crop sensor lenses. The only manufacturers that make decent speed boosters are of course, Metabones and Viltrox. And there are many videos around here that compare those two on which speed booster is better. Buying one can destroy your pocket especially for beginner filmmakers. So today, I will create a speed booster for just $2. I bet you won't believe it. So without further ado, let's get it. By the way, this project is inspired by CinemaScope by Lasha Panchulids, so make sure to check him out. I bought this wide angle and macro lens adapter for smartphones for just around $2. It came with a small pouch, clip, and lenses. You can combine both macro and wide angle lens or you can only use one lens by detaching it. It is sturdy as it is built of metal, which is not evident on most wide angle lenses on this price point. For this project, we only need the macro lens part. As we can see, this lens is enclosed and it cannot fit inside the camera nor my EF to ESM adapter, which is quite a hassle. And I also experienced it since this is not built for cameras. All we need is the glass element and we don't need the frame, so we can ditch the frame and just get the glass element. But the problem is, there isn't any holes or driver to detach the lens onto its frame. When I bought this, I thought it will have some kind of mini hole which the ring on the casing will be rotated to detach the lens, but it didn't have any. But when I searched on online stores for similar wide angle lens, I can see that all of the products had the same type of body, but different manufacturers, and some have holes on the frame ring but more expensive. So, I thought that, hey, the one that I bought can also be rotated. The only problem is the manufacturers didn't punch a hole on the frame ring. I don't know why they didn't punch a hole on this product. Maybe that is the reason mine was cheaper than the others with detachable lens. So I found a way to snug the lens away from its casing. Honestly, this is a tiring process. I am very careful to avoid scratching the lens itself. I didn't put any masking tape to the glass element because I am too lazy. <laughs> I used various methods but it ended up doing it the hard way. After some nervous drilling, I finally can rotate the ring. Some of the glass elements side are damaged due to the drill, but it didn't affect the center glass which is okay. And this is it. The next thing we're gonna do is how to fit it onto the top of the sensor perfectly. I found a rubber band sitting around my stash and tried it to snug onto the top of the sensor along with a wide angle lens. It worked. But there's an excess rubber band hanging on the top but it isn't much of a problem. I tested it but I am not sure if this is gonna be the best solution. I think of many ways on how to fit it onto the top of the sensor and finally, I saw some velcro ties on my stash and tried to cut it to make it as a stuffing for the wide angle lens. And to my surprise, it worked. For occasional uses, I think it will do the job done. I will make a detachable casing for this wide angle lens in the future to properly attach it without problems. Now, for 
the moment of truth, I will test this DIY speed booster to my three lenses. The Canon 50mm f1.8 version 2, Tukina ADX 28-85 f3.5, and lastly, the Fujian 35mm f1.7. And of course, as a magic lantern fanatic, I will use the Canon EOS M to test this thing out. And the results are here. All these clips are shot on 1080p 3x2 mode, which I think replicates the original look of Canon's default FOV. Correct me if I'm wrong. As you can see, it widens the field of view of the lens, and it even brings in more light to the camera just like the speed booster. But you can notice that it has some swirly bokeh on the sides which looks like a vintage glass. And it can be good or bad trait depending on what type of shot you want. For most cases, swirly bokeh is not necessary. So if you want to use the speed booster, you might want to increase the crop of the camera or if you use magic lantern, choose other resolution options, preferably the center crop mode or 2.5K. In my opinion, it would work best on lenses that have an aperture of 3.5 and up. And when I use it on fast lenses, the image becomes super soft and the aperture is very hard to adjust especially for manual lenses. I don't have a dedicated speed booster like Metabones or Viltrox or even Pixco to compare this to it. So if you have one, I suggest that you'll try this DIY project and I would like to know your thoughts. For example, I use this Rokinon 50mm T1.5 cinema lens and when I use T2.8 and up, the image is very soft and the corners are swirly. I must use it on T4 and up to preserve sharpness and clarity on the clip. I will post another video on how I use this DIY speed booster and this lens on my recent trip. If you want to try it out, I suggest that you might want to buy another wide angle lens variant that has rotating holes in it to get the lens properly without any damage whatsoever. For me, I want to get the cheapest things possible with the same functionality, so in return, I must take the risk. This is the speed booster that you can attach any lenses on it. It is perfect for creative shots. And I would definitely recommend this project for those creatives right there who wants to try something new without breaking the bank.